St. Mary's was just one of 13 from the floor. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Jay, you got anything for me, man? What do you got? You got anything for me? This is Jerem Jordan of uh, BYU Sports Nation. St. Mary's, the bane of BYU's existence right now, Alex. Well, just keep bringing it. Hey, that, that physical play was too much. You, you know, it five like shots made in the first half and only down seven. The, the free throw line. Uh, One thirteen in the second quarter. Mar- yeah, yeah. K- kept St. Mary's in the game. And that's, I mean, that's kind of Paul Thomas's hallmark there. You rebound the basketball. Uh, you know, you get to the free throw line, and and, and like you said, I mean, ten of eleven in the first half. Ten of eleven in the first half. BYU had taken just three free throws there in the first half, so that keeps them around. They finally start making some shots there in the second half, and really, I mean, you look at that fourth quarter. I thought there was a lot that went uncalled that could have got called in that fourth quarter. A lot of physical play, and no whistles until about halfway through. Yeah, St. Mary's made almost every shot, and BYU couldn't make a bucket. And so, yeah, it's spread out. And St. Mary's, hey, deserves to get to the championship game, matches up with Gonzaga. And that's been a fun matchup all year, St. Mary's and BYU. Five one in one place, six in the other. So St. Mary's gets it done. So now it's we've been calling it St. Mary's again today. <laughs> the men's game tonight, it's interesting. I was talking to someone, they said, what do you think tonight? And I said, from the BYU perspective, not confident. Bad matchup. St. Mary's just... It's a bad matchup for BYU. And, and uh, this person said, oh, it's funny because all the people I talk to think BYU is going to win. And I said, oh, that's interesting. We'll see what happens tonight. Jerem, thanks for the time, brother. Hey. We hope to talk to you again tonight, maybe. Well, yeah, we'll talk to you tonight, Alec. Absolutely. Jerem Jordan of BYU Sports Nation. Before we hear from the coach, yep, it's uh, Tracy Moore, Tracy Sanders, pardon me. And uh, go ahead and slide on, slide on right in here, Tracy. As uh, we hear from the coach, brought to you by Shamrock Office Solutions, your um, – all right, let me get to that read here. Shamrock Office Solutions, proud partner of St. Mary's Athletics. Uh, boy, I mean, you could draw up the similarities all day between today's ball game and, and Thursday's ball game. I mean, struggle in the first half, just couldn't get anything to go down in the yeah. second quarter. Stay alive at the free throw line and then make your run in the second half. What yeah. stood out to you there? Um, you know, I think the first half, we obviously, you know, I think that second quarter we shot like 7% from the field or something ridiculous like, like that. But we were also turning the ball over, um, giving them easy opportunities. And um, so really focused on, um, you know, just taking care of the ball, handling their pressure, um, working to get good shots. But really, you know, when it comes down to it, we, we have to play defense, we have to get stops, and we have to rebound. And so I think in the second half that was the focus. And um, shots started falling and, you know, Looked good there for a while. <laughs> yeah, I remember PT told me before the game that a key to this game was going to be Stella Beck and on both ends of the floor. Yeah. And she defends West Coast Conference Player of the Year this year, Cassie Broadhead. Right. And Cassie Broadhead goes one of nine. I mean, just completely shut out of the first half. Yeah. Got one off in the second, but she was a non-factor. Yeah. Stella's, you know, she's so long. Um, she's athletic. She can keep people in front of her. Um, so she's a tough matchup for people, um, you know, and she, she's strong, you know, for her size, she has some, some strength in there too. So she can, she can defend multiple people. I mean, we had her defending a post at times, um, when, when Broadhead was out with in foul trouble. So she's really versatile, um, on both ends of the floor, you know, even on this end, we tried to post her up a little bit. And so, um, she's just one of those people that's just hard to defend and you like to have her on your side of the floor for defense as well. I thought Shannon Malden gave you guys a real shot in the arm there in the second yeah. half. Her energy, her hustle. I mean, and I mean, just how nice is it to be that versatile to have another capable right. ball handler like Shannon Malden, who was preseason all conference yeah. last year, by the way, who plays with the type of energy she does off yeah. the bench. That was huge for you in the for second sure. half. For sure, Shannon is a great ball handler. She's probably one of our best ball handlers, and I think for her to come in and kind of do what she did she was able to get to the basket um you know we can clear it out for her we can set the on-ball screen and she's pretty good at getting in there and drawing the foul um she does a great job of job of jump stopping and finishing strong um and then you know being able to make plays when she gets to the paint and kick it out and things like that and I thought that three she hit in the corner was huge um really kind of a spark for us so she was great tonight I thought Sydney Raggio's 40 minutes tonight or the 40 minutes for Sydney Raggio kind of embodied the way your team went I mean a rough again a rough second quarter a rough yeah. first half but Sydney played really well there down the stretch in yeah. the second half she started off with a couple of buckets she had a couple of tough ones there in the third quarter when you made your run yeah. You know, I mean, and it, I've seen a bunch of stats like when Sydney leads your team in rebounding, you're twelve and one or something yeah. like that. I mean, is there? Do you draw a line there? Is there a correlation? Uh, yeah, I mean, there is. And Sid's one of those people. I mean, when she's playing well, she you can just tell she's in a zone. And um, you know, I think the biggest thing for her is just getting her, um, you know, to to let lo- the last play go and move on and do your thing. She's such an instinctual player and so good at just. Um, 
you know, having a knack for just different things on the floor, rebounding, and um, she's so savvy around the basket, she can use her left hand or her right hand, so she's really hard to defend. Um, so I think for her, it's just having that confidence, you know, you make a mistake or you miss a shot, let it go, move on, um, get the next one, and I thought she did a great job of that tonight. This is a really physical game, and I, I know your team relishes physical games. I mean, that's the type of player you like to bring into your program, <laughs> right. right? So, it, But it was kind of right up Megan McKay's alley, and Megan McKay was had a huge impact in this game on the boards, her putbacks. I mean, just really bothering BYU yeah. with her presence yeah. out there. I mean, you know, talk about the physicality of this game, first of all. I mean, right. I know that's that's right up your team's alley. It right? is. It is. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, we came out, I felt like we were really aggressive to start. I felt like they cranked it up, and we kind of bowed down a little bit in the second half. So I think that was, again, something that the second half we, we really focused on. Hey, they're going to be physical. You know, we both have to be aggressive. Um, this is going to be a physical game. We have to be able to handle that and be prepared. Meg, um, you know, Meg's still young. She's, she's just finishing her sophomore year, and she's a tough kid. And so I think there's so much more to come from her. You know, I think we're just we're – just starting to climb the hill with her I mean I think she's incredible and um, I think once she realizes what she's capable of doing she's going to be unstoppable you know there's not a lot of people with that body and that strength and um, she can go get rebounds she finishes well you know she has some things to improve upon and she's a hard-working kid I think she really wants to please and she's going to put the time in but she's just incredible your team had, I think it was 13 first half turnovers, and just I think it was seven or eight in the second half. I don't remember the, the final number, right. but most of that second half, you know, BYU employed that 94 foot press, a lot of trapping. Yeah. Uh, and for your team to limit the turnovers, given that pressure, what does that say about your club? Um, yeah, it's something we've worked on. Uh, so I, I think we did. We were prepared. We knew that it was coming at some point. Um, really, the last the last two games between the two of us, you know, it's been one game we pressed to get back into the game, um, the other game they pressed to get back in. So we kind of we kind of laughed before the game like, you know, maybe we should just both come out pressing and, and <laughs> see how it goes. But, you know, I think both teams obviously prepared for that because we knew that was something that was probably going to happen. Um, we did talk at halftime, though. You know, they had a lot of points off of turnovers. I felt like we were doing a good job in the half court, but it was turnovers that were leading to easy baskets for them. So we limited those in the second half, and that really helped. Now you get your third crack at Gonzaga, and it's been two really close right. games, a four-point loss in McEwen and a one-point loss yeah. in Spokane. What are the, I mean, what are the key matchups here? What yeah. can we look for with Gonzaga? How do you feel your team stacks up? And what is your Gosh. team going to have to do well to get a different result? Yeah, we're going to have to contest shots. You know, they're a team that takes advantage. You know, if you take something away, they're really good at um, scoring on the next option. So I think just being really locked in and, and prepared to play. And, you know, they have a great mix of good guards and good post players. So it's really, you know, there's not really a, a weakness out there. So just overall, I think we're going to have to come in prepared. Obviously, Bart is a huge player for them. Um, you know, I, I think overall their posts this tournament have been playing exceptionally well. So we're going to have to come in ready to defend in the post, box out, um, you know, contain on the perimeter, all those things that we do, contest shots. Um, but, yeah, we, we're going to have to be focused because they're playing really well right now. Yeah, and USF fell into a huge hole there in the first yeah. half. Obviously can't yeah. have that, but no. uh, in all honesty, congratulations, Thank Coach. You. And uh, I'm sure you got a really happy locker room back there. I'll let you go back and join them. We'll you. see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Tracy Sanders brought to you by Shamrock Office Solutions. We are uh, we're lucky enough to be joined by Rusty Simmons, San Francisco Chronicle, uh, making the trip down here to cover all three Bay Area schools, although uh, USF women just bounced today, so right. the two St. Mary's teams now in Santa Clara. Yeah, it's finally uh, finally getting condensed a little bit. It's been a wild week trying to keep up with all the, the local teams, but uh, it's tough to complain about getting paid to watch hoops. No, no, no doubt. And crazy time of year as always, I mean, with all the conference tournaments going on. I mean, can you think of a more, you know, you got spring training going on, you got March Madness, uh, you know, you got the NBA season getting right into its stretch run. Can you think of a better time of year just to be a sports fan? This is this is my favorite time of year. I'm a big basketball fan, so like you said, NBA is closing in on the playoffs and, and college being in March Madness uh, it, to me is the most fun time of the year. And there's always uh, some kind of hope about spring training. So when the pitchers and catchers report and guys go down to, to the desert and to Florida, it, it kind of renews things for us. No question. Well, let's take a look at this one so far. You've got uh, St. Mary's trailing BYU 27 to 20 and what's got to be a extremely frustrating first half for Paul Thomas you got I mean a bunch of missed layups they're 5 of 28 from the floor and 13 turnovers and how does St. Mary's turn things around here and after a disastrous second quarter I, I, mean, I think you hit it right on the head um, it, this sounds simple but if they make layups they're in a great spot I mean um, they're killing them on the boards 27 to 16 
They've had 13 offensive rebounds. Those are point blank bunnies that they're just not making. Um, and that's not characteristic of St. Mary's. I think they're doing everything else well. They've taken Broadhead, the, the player of the conference, completely out of the game. Um, they're, they're dominating the glass. They've just got to make layups. Yeah, and 11 to 3 and free throws yeah. attempted. Like it, but can't put a hit anything from the field. It's going to be tough to Absolutely. win a ball game. Uh, that first game, Gonzaga uh, really ran out from the start against USF. I think when I got here, it was 43 to 7 or, or something along those yeah. lines. Is I mean, in, in your you know what you've seen this weekend and in, in covering a little bit of US, is Gonzaga that dominant on the women's side, or was that just kind of USF just didn't have it? Yeah, it, it surprised me because Gonzaga's actually been struggling toward the end of the season. In fact, they lost to USF here um, just last month, and USF has been on a run. They're, they have a dynamic backcourt duo that had been shooting close to 50% for the last five games, um, and all of a sudden the team's just kind of changed roles. Gonzaga switched into March Madness mode, and USF kind of went back to where they started. Um, they couldn't make a shot and Gonzaga played great and uh, like you said it was 20 to 4 before USF looked up at the scoreboard and they just couldn't fight back into it. He had a story in this morning's newspaper on Stella Beck yeah. uh, obviously from New Zealand. St. Mary's known obviously for the Australian connection yeah. but Stella Beck making the trip over from, from New Zealand. How did she get to St. Mary's and kind of how has she found the culture there being a Kiwi as opposed to an Aussie? Yeah, it's kind of a neat story. Um, growing up, uh, you know, she played for all of the New Zealand women's teams and, and noticed that she was constantly playing against Australian teams. And she saw that St. Mary's was recruiting these Aussies that she had played against. And she said, well, I've got film against those players. And her dad started shooting that film over to St. Mary's. And sure enough, um, they started recruiting her. And um, you know, there's always the banter between Kiwis and Aussies, and, and they joke, and she gets teamed up on because there's three Aussies on this team, but um, she rooms with Carly Turner and their best friends, and it sounds like it's become a great relationship. Um, and, in fact, uh, she dates an Aussie and, and said that those people were a reminder of home, so it seems like a really neat situation that, that her and her dad found a way in, and it's worked out well for her. Across the board, that kind of seems to be the, the theme, you know, with the Aussies on the men's team, too. It's yeah. You come to St. Mary's, and it's almost like a home away from home because there, there are so many of your country mates on, you know, in both programs, right. and even going to the tennis team. I mean, there have been tennis players that have come through St. Mary's and Australian as well. Yeah. I mean, that seems like a real draw for somebody from down under coming stateside. I absolutely think that's right. Um, it's tough for an 18 to 22 year old to make that kind of adjustment, right? To go a world away. But when you have a little bit of that piece of home, um, I'm sure that helps. And and the other thing with, with those players, a lot of times, you know, I covered the Warriors for eight or nine years and it seemed like every locker room you were in um, that had an Aussie, they were considered some of the best teammates in that locker room. Think of Patty Mills and Matty Delvadova. Those guys are beloved by their teammates. Um, and so I think there's some kind of spirit about the Aussies that is welcoming and, and brings people in. Estelle Beck's had a nice first half here. Tommy, she's one of three from the field, but five boards and three steals, playing like a first-team all-leaguer in this first half. Yeah, and I think uh, she can do everything on the floor, so it's easy to miss some of the stuff she did, does, but um, she's got the primary uh, responsibility on Broadhead and didn't allow her to score until the second quarter, um, was able to pick up three fouls and get her out of the game. So um, she's doing a fantastic job on both ends. Let's take a quick preview and look at the men's side tonight. Uh, in the early game, you've got the one-seed Gonzaga and the four-seed Santa Clara. Uh, the two-seed St. Mary's and the three-seed BYU. Uh, you know, you look at that first game, and, and Jared Brownridge can keep you in any game for Santa Clara. Their depth has been compromised, and, and Gonzaga has obviously got the, the handle there. But, you know, this, what kind of chance does Santa Clara have? What kind of chance do you give the Broncos in that game? Is it a game where, you know, Jared Brownridge is going to have to score 30-plus to keep the Broncos within shouting distance? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the three-point line is something that can keep them competitive. If Brownridge goes crazy, if Crash goes crazy from three, they got a chance. It'd be interesting to see if they get Feegan back tonight um, from a concussion. I think he's a real difference maker. Yep. Um, but I think Gonzaga is uh, the face of the league right now. I think they're one of the best teams in the country. Um, and so it's going to take them not playing their best and Santa Clara going crazy from the three-point line to win that. And I think Santa Clara knows that. This is Herb Sendek's first year. He didn't have great expectations for him. So for them to be getting to the semifinals, I think he's real proud of what this group's done. St. Mary's and BYU, the Gales swept the Cougars in the regular season. They live by as many as 25 in that matchup in a sold-out Marriott Center in Provo, Utah. So far this year, the Gales have had the Cougars' number, but Eric Mika might be the best player in the conference. He, he might be, um, and, he, and he'll have a really interesting decision to see if he wants to go to the NBA because I know prospects are already drooling over him. Um, and, he, and he's a good player that can change the game for sure, but I think St. Mary's is the overwhelming favorite in this game. 
although they kept reminding me yesterday that they know what it was like a year ago when they beat Gonzaga twice in the regular season and then got bounced here and, and got left out of the tournament. So, so they know how hard it is to beat a team three times in, in one year. Looking at the women's final, and we'll, we'll end with this one, which one of these two teams has the best chance to topple the top seed? BYU has beaten Gonzaga this year. St. Mary's lost on a last-second shot by Laura Stockton in Spokane. Which one of these two teams do you give a better chance to take down the one seed tomorrow? Yeah, it seems like the obvious answer should be BYU simply because they've they've knocked them off already once during the year. Um, but I really like the way St. Mary's is playing right now. You know, it seems like uh, at one point this year, Coach Thomas said this is the worst year we've ever had. And all of a sudden, in the last three, four games, they've really started to click together. Um, you can see how much fun they have together. And I think they're gelling at the right time. And, and um, if they get to the finals, I could see them making a real good run at Gonzaga. Where can the people find your work and follow you on social media? Yeah, we uh, have SanFranciscoChronicle.com, SFGate.com, and uh, I'm tweet tweeting at uh, Rusty underscore SFCron. Um, and uh, for those of you who still pick up the print edition, we run it uh, daily, and we had uh, four stories on the, the local WCC teams yesterday. So finally getting a chance to cover these guys the way they deserve it. And we, of course, encourage the print edition. Absolutely. Uh, here, uh, Absolutely. You're on the St. Mary's IMG Sports now. Well, Rusty, thanks so much for the time, man. We really appreciate it. Enjoy your time in Vegas. Hopefully we'll run into you again soon. Sure thing. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Rusty Simmons of the uh, San Francisco Chronicle. We'll take a quick break, come back with the third quarter of St. Mary's and BYU. The Gales with some work to do, trailing the Cougars by seven in this semifinal along the St. Mary's IMG Sports Network. Thank <laughs> you.